skull and some vertebrae. Hmm. I lost my shoe. Welcome to Outdoor Exploration. The things that happen in the forest. Um, yeah, this is just interesting. I have no idea what it is. A little vertebra and a skull that is significantly decomposed. That So I, I don't know what it is. Maybe a rat. Possibly a mink, I guess. Anyway, uh, today I would like to do something that I call an earth meditation. Uh, it sounds very different from the rest of the videos I've done, which are often uh, talking about particular plants or areas, um, interesting places to explore and things to discover. This video is more about how to discover and not, not just how to discover, but how to kind of prepare our minds for the the intake of the world at large. So that sounded weird, but hopefully this makes sense. Um, this is something that I do uh, with groups that I work with as well as on my own. And basically the point of my wild art program that I ran before the pandemic started and end of these videos is to help us connect with our own ecosystem, the environment that we live in, which we are a part of. And that is really the point. So whether we're going looking for wild food, um, uh, you know, farming on at our own homes, or just discovering what's growing in the moss or under a log or, you know, in the shoreline at a beach. Um, the idea is to look at our surroundings, at our home, and to notice all of the amazing, interesting things about it, um, which uh, many of which actually have applications in our own lives, many of which we actually participate in without knowing. For example, some of the medicines that we use come from plants that are growing around us in the wild. Um, many of the foods that we eat are also in the wild in perhaps different versions but um, than those that we buy at the grocery store. Um, but the idea is we are a part of the wild, the wild is part of us, all is one. <laughs> I wouldn't normally say something like that, but that really is the overarching view here. Um, and the more we explore, the more we discover, the more we are a part of things and the more things are important to us. And I think the more that we understand our environment, um, the better, the better we are, the, the more we understand ourselves, the more we understand the world and the more we can connect with each other and the world we live in. So this meditation, is it's a talking meditation on my part but um once you've done it you could do it yourself without talking if you wanted or with groups of people and uh yeah the idea is just to know ourselves on this earth so with that i'm going to lie down here and it's a little wet it's been raining again and uh and do the meditation perfect spot is a spot where you are comfortable. That's all that matters. So I just move some sticks out of the way, find a flat spot. <sighs> and so there is actually um, a practice that's growing in popularity these days called forest bathing. And uh, it uh, generally involves just going into a forest to to soak in the forest and apparently it has been shown to provide many health benefits physical and emotional and uh, I think this is yet another form of forest bathing I made this up myself but a lot of people do things like this so um, here we go if you're ready to do this um, find yourself a good spot like I said lay down and make yourself very comfortable so that you can lay here for at least five minutes. Now what we're going to do is take a deep, deep breath, let it out through your nose. So,
Now the next time we take a deep breath, as you breathe in slowly, you're going to tighten your toes and then your heels and your legs and your hips and your belly and your chest and your shoulders and your arms and your shoulders and your neck and your face and your head. And then as you breathe out, you're going to release all of those things in the reverse order. So here we go. Breathing out through my nose, which I can't do while talking to you, I'm going to let go of my head and my face and my neck and my shoulders and my arms and hands and my back and belly and hips and upper legs and lower legs and feet and toes. Now the idea of being here is not to be unaware, but to be very aware. So the first thing I'm going to notice is the feeling of my body on the ground. I can feel kind of rock on one side. I can feel the litter of the forest floor, a stick, some bits of fern leaves. I can feel a bit of wind. Sometimes I feel a mosquito land and it's okay to wipe them away. <laughs> I can hear the world around me. I hear my cat who has joined us walking all the way from our house. Oh, I feel some sort of a grassy stem. My eyes are still closed, but I can hear some birds in the distance. My cat is chewing something somewhere nearby. I can f hear a, a fly landing on my nose and my hair. I can hear my fingers in the leaf matter. Very far away, I, I think I hear a creak. And now, I feel the pressure of my body on the ground in certain places more than others. And I feel the heaviness of myself there. And when I open my eyes, I see all the leaves above me. Where I am, it's maple leaves and some cedar and a huckleberry bush, a tall stump, all the moss in the maple trees. And up beyond those leaves of those trees, I see the sky. I see some naked branches. I see the clouds flying away up there slowly. I see where they're brighter because the sun is behind them. I see how the blue of the sky is darker in some places than in others. And now coming back down to myself, among the branches of the leaf, of the trees, I notice all the shadows of all the leaves on each other. How in some places they're a brilliant, brilliant yellow green and in other places a much darker one. And some of the branches are silhouetted against that, and some of them are lit by sunlight. I see some small clusters of seeds up there. The huckleberry leaves are the same, all different colors of green produced by the different amounts of sunlight they're gathering. The moss is all different greens too, and I see some little tiny ferns way up there. And closer down. I can see the texture of the bark of the maple trees and of the cedar and of the moss that's on top of the maples. The texture of the rotting wood of the stump near me. I can see the mosquitoes and flies hovering around waiting to eat me. <laughs> and I can see a bit of my glasses on my face and I can see my cat beside me catching the flies. Thank you, Blackberry. And I can feel again the dirt all under me. And I can imagine under that dirt, there are pockets of decomposing needles and leaf matter on top of rocks that are not even at all. And the rocks go down and under the rocks, there are 
layer upon layer of different rocks and maybe some water in between there feeding our wells maybe seeping out into the creeks there are roots that have wedged their way down through those rocks slowly breaking them apart and creating more places for life to grow and a long 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 way down under those rocks and layer upon layer of minerals there is lava and down below the lava there is magma and the core of the earth which my son explains to me is solid because of the pressure now coming back up towards me again back up through the magma and the lava and bits of different rocks and layers of different minerals and up to where the tree roots have made it down through the rocks and maybe bacteria grow there who knows some sort of microorganisms down there and up higher and higher until maybe we find some worms in the dirt and other insects and definitely lots of fungi and as we get closer and closer we find the roots of the plants and the ferns and this leaf matter again and the sticks and now I am going to go out from my body sideways across the surface of the earth and I can feel more sticks and in the distance, I know there are ferns. I know there are places in the forest where the sun is reaching and some where it's not. Some places where the creeks flow by. Some places where the forest opens up and becomes a glade or a marsh or a swamp. Some places where people have built homes and cleared the land, where there are roads and even further away there are beaches and rocks and mountains and then the ocean around my island. Wherever you are, eventually you would come to ocean on all sides. And across the ocean, somewhere there will be more land and more mountains and different rocks and different trees and different people, different animals different bacteria and viruses and fungi, everything will continue to be found in every place on earth, even the most seemingly inhospitable. And the further around we go, the further we go around until we actually become aware that we're lying on top of a giant ball. It's so big, we don't feel like we're on a giant ball. It feels flat, but that's just because we're so tiny by comparison to this massive, massive earth with its many massive towering mountains and even more massively deep oceans where billions and billions of people are living in different ways with different customs and different languages and different faces all over this world. Different animals, different weather, different climate. The whole world is an enormous mixture of life. All on this ball, turning and turning and turning through space as it spirals its way around after the sun in a dance with all the other balls, spinning and spinning and spinning in the tail of the sun, as the sun itself sits in the galaxy, which is spinning itself and the galaxy and the universe. And we, the little pinprick on the surface of the earth, are still down here, just laying here, feeling our heaviness on the ground feeling the leaf matter and all those enormous things and all the small things that we can feel right under us and flying around us 
and the air and the temperature and the dampness of the ground. Even the feelings we have inside us. All of these things are here to pay attention to. So now I'm just going to be silent for a moment and feel it and see it and smell it. And hear it. And know it. When I'm ready, I open my eyes. I look around one last time. And that is an earth meditation. I hope you enjoy it. Happy exploring. <laughs>